Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Daily Prompt. My name is Jeff Ballo, I'm an independent producer on my way toward building an independent film studio that produces multiple films each year. I'm documenting my journey to get to that point. Uh, so if you are new around here and you're wondering what is this and why is this guy talking so much, basically uh, I'm talking so much to try to help writers understand the producer's mindset, to learn the craft of how to turn their ideas into screenplays, not just screenplays, but screenplays producers can actually say yes to, and then to go along that path. Now, only a few, I'm sure, uh, who are watching this will actually join me on the journey, but I do believe that the world is enormous, and I believe that there are far more people out there than I can that I can help than can join me. Uh, so if you're not interested in joining me, or if you can't join me, or if you just decide you want to go about it your own way, absolutely fine, absolutely cool. I'm still going to help you get everything you need to actually get to that goal. So what I was going to do in today's video was sort of explain the big, uh, the opportunity that's available to us today. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to address one of the what one of what. Uh, of the discussions that came up in the comments. The comments on the YouTube channel are are the lifeblood of this show. So if you have any questions at all, ask it in the comments. If you disagree with anything I say, I know there's a lot of people are watching, seeing the, the, the views go up, the likes are sort of <laughs> holding steady, and the comments are from a few very active people. Thank you guys, I very much appreciate the, uh, the interactive conversation. This is a, this is a unique window in, in time. This is a very unique moment when I have the time and the energy and the ability to interact with you one-on-one -on, -one on the comments. As this scales, as I actually build the thing that I've set out to build here, I'm gonna have less and less time to actually interact with the comments. So rather than just sort of plow ahead with what I think you want and what I think you need and what I believe is in your best interest, I do want to address uh, some of the questions and comments that come up along the way. Now, a lot of the comments that I've seen so far, uh, a number of the comments that I've seen so far are addressing things that we will, asking things that we will address in coming episodes. Things like, how do I get an agent or how do I submit a, 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 an idea to a, to a production company without an agent or uh, I have an idea but I don't know how to flesh it out into a full feature length or the any sort of detail of within the process we are going to cover <laughs> don't worry uh the the big problem the big challenge not a problem it's a challenge that we don't necessarily have the the time i can't answer some of those questions in a comment i'll do my best i'll give you a little nugget but uh but i but a lot of them take time to answer and a lot of them take consistent viewing of this show to answer and that's what I want to what I want to address today what producers want the big question from uh, one of our uh, I'm sorry I'm not I'm not sort of looking at the names at the moment uh, one of our one of our lovely commenters <laughs> uh, is asking me I just want to know what producers want <laughs> and I answered in the my, gave my perspective in the in the comments, but I want to make this video about that because I think that's an, a huge question that a lot of people um, a lot of people ask me. I teach from the producer's perspective. I tell you that the number one reason that 99% of writers will never sell their work is because they're writing material that producers can't say yes to. They're creating material that's not production ready. It's not viable. It's not aligned with the producer that they're submitting to. So the natural question would logically be, well, okay, what do producers want? What do they need? And the simple answer is that that varies for every producer. The thing to understand, and there's a fundamental misunderstanding, I think, in writers as they approach the craft of screenwriting. Screenwriting is not like novel writing. Screenwriting is not like magazine writing. Screenwriting is not just taking an idea and turning it into a piece of fiction. It is that, but it is also creating a document that's gonna be turned into a film. It's also, it, it's first and foremost a story, but it also is and has to be something that is viable within the real world marketplace, something that we can turn into a film. You can create a great story that exists inside the minds of the characters that we have no way to film 
and we can't use that. Now, I'm not, most writers are not writing that, but most writers do include scenes or description or characters or uh, aspects of their story that are that, are things that we can't actually film, that we can't use. So there's an old sort of, um, you know, screenwriting 101 idea of only write what we can see on the screen and hear through the audio track, right? So you're not going to include any exposition. You're not going to include, include any information. You know, Bob was top of his class in high school. Unless we can see that on the page, unless a character is saying that out of their mouth, we're not going to include that in the screenplay. But that's, that's something simple. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here is writing something that is intrinsically an idea, is intrinsically something that is uh, idea-based. Now, <laughs> I lost my train of thought there for a second. I'm going to come back. So let me put this into, let me, let me put this as simply as I can. Every producer on the planet is, so far, a human being. <laughs> I say that because one day the robots will come. Uh, at the moment, they're all human beings. And because they're all human beings, just like you, my basic general premise of the world is that every single person on this planet sees and experiences life through their own vantage point. We all have a different window on our world that we interpret everything through. So you live a life, you have DNA that is unlike anyone else. You're a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, a little bit wider, a little bit thinner, a little bit older, a little bit younger. All of those things will factor into the story you tell. In addition to that, your experience in life. How were you raised? What were your parents like? What was your family like? Did you even know your parents? Were you in this country or that country or this city or that city? All of those things are going to change the way you think about the stories and the ideas that come up in your head. If I say, let's create a romantic comedy with two characters on either side of the country, which I suggested in an earlier video, Every single person, based on all those differences, is going to imagine a different situation, a different scenario. Well, here's the thing. Every writer is unique, and so every story is intrinsically unique. Same goes for the producer. There is no, if you think of a producer as just a blank type, as a character, as a, as a, as a box that you have to try to get your screenplay into, then you're not understanding the what's going to actually help you achieve what you want to achieve. If you're writing a screenplay, you're not writing for the audience. You're not writing for an Amazon buyer to click and buy now. You're writing for the production. The end product is not your screenplay. The end product is the movie that we make from your screenplay. So to say, I, I know this is true of probably 95% of the people watching this right now. So for the rest of you 5%, bear with me. But the vast majority of writers, they'll, they'll complete their script and they'll try to get it into the hands of any producer they can get it into the hands of. That is 100% an erroneous approach. It doesn't work like that. For example, the example I gave earlier in the series is I'm not going to make a horror film. That doesn't mean you shouldn't write a horror film. I know lots of people, some of my best friends love making horror films. At the end of the day, I'm not going to make it because it's not aligned with what I want to create, what I want to put out there. Watch my TED talk. You'll have a sense of what I want to create and what I want to put out there. Similarly, every producer on the planet has their own unique perspective. They have their own background. They have their own education. They have their own industry experience. Some are complete novices. They've never made a film before, but they're passionate and that's what they want to do. And so they're out there looking for material. Some of them are at the top of the game and literally 100,000 people are trying to get their script into that person's hands. Some of them have an artistic sensibility. Some of them have purely profit motive. Some are happy to make low budget exploitation genre films. They love that stuff. Some want to make highbrow, high-minded, Oscar caliber material. At the end of the day, what are you writing? Who are you writing for? Now, there are a number of things that, you, that all screenplays have to have that would... So along the way, I've said many times that 90... 
I've said probably about 80% of screenplays that get submitted would not be usable by any producer or production company. So why is that? What What's the problem with those? The problems are vast and varied. There's no, I'm not gonna be able to give you a single one word answer. I'm not gonna be able to give you a checklist of the 10 things to keep in mind that producers need in your screenplay because every producer is different. But what I can tell you is they all need to be a very strong story. They all need to give the audience a compelling emotional roller coaster of an experience. They all need to be market friendly. There needs to be some way for a producer to be able to actually think about how they're going to sell the, the end film. If it's a if it's a quirky little niche story that only probably a hundred people in the world would be interested in, there's no way to justify spending a million dollars to make it. Now that's an extreme example, and we are living in a different era today, which is kind of where I wanted to go with today's episode. I'll do that next week. Um, that we can make material that's a little bit more niche along the way these days. But at the end of the day, you need to understand, if you make a movie for a million dollars, you need to be able to sell probably between four and five million dollars worth of back-end sales, box office, selling to cable or streaming or all that kind of stuff, uh, selling it on iTunes, whatever it might be. You need to sell about four to five million dollars worth to make your money back. Okay, because there's there's advertising and distribution and all that in the traditional cost. Now, there are different ways to do this stuff, and we're going to talk about a lot of that stuff through this series. But at the end of the day, if you make a story that needs to make have that kind of an audience, that's a very different movie than if you make a Hollywood blockbuster. If you make a if you write a script that's going to have a $200 million budget because it's got all these visual effects. It's Aquaman or something and it's these visual effects and, and things you can't possibly do on a low budget. If you make a movie for $200 million, you're going to need to make $500 million plus to be able to recoup that stuff. And a lot of the money that you make over and above the budget ends up going into further promotion for the DVD sales or the ancillary advertising or whatever is going to happen, right? So... So if you're making, if your idea for a movie is this $200 million idea, well, guess what? You're going to be competing with writers who are already in that world writing the $200 million movie. And if you look around, there's probably a dozen, a hundred tops uh, places where you could go, probably not a hundred, probably close to a dozen places you could go to actually get that made. You're going to be competing with the top of the top, the best of the best, which is fine. And every, even the people who are competing at that level need what I'm going to be covering through the series. The point, though, is that you need to understand what the producer needs to make sure that you're creating something that they can say yes to. If somebody submitted to me a $200 million budget project, I can't make that right now. Uh, I could probably make um, somewhere between a three and five million dollar film. Um, I'm currently focused on making much low, much much lower budget films. If you ha if you're trying, if you have an idea and you want to write it for a low budget or even an ultra low budget, you have to understand what the production process is all about, so that you know that your story could actually be made for a low or ultra low budget. Do you understand? So it's so there's that kind of thing to it, the budget considerations. There are the quality of the story, the quality of the characters. Is this something that an actor would 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 appeal to a name actor? Is this something that the characters are kind of thin and flimsy and one-dimensional? How do you create what three-dimensional characters? We'll talk about that in an upcoming episode. Uh, this is what I'm saying. There are so many layers to the answer to the question of what producers want and need that to try to condense it into a single episode it, it's not how this works it's not it, it's not how you learn this stuff and and this to me is indicative of a larger problem that writers have you're you guys are always on the lookout for the information. You're always on the lookout for that one little tip or that one little trick or that one little technique or suggestion that's gonna make all the difference. And there is none. There is none. There is no single technique that's gonna that's going to make your screenplay marketable. There is no single technique that's gonna get you across the line. What's gonna what's going to get you there is consistent, ongoing, 
daily action. The whole point of this show to give you a daily prompt so that you take the action. So you keep coming back and you watch these videos for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it ends up being. You watch it each day, you're getting this perspective into your head. You're what you're again and again and again, you're getting the ideas. You're, you're, you're gonna start to see the perspective, not through some listicle, not through some uh, some pun, some some jump to this time code because there's where he said it moment. You're going to get the information by understanding the context of the information. Producers are individual people. Some are women, some are men, some are black guys, some are Asian women, some are some live in India and make movies in India. Some are in. Singapore and make movies in Singapore. I know a great guy who makes movies in Malaysia. Um, at the end of the day, we're all around the world and we, we make movies all around the world. And the stories that you tell need to understand that you need to understand how you're going to create something that will connect with a producer. So what does a producer think about? A producer thinks about, here's a script that's come in. A, do I like it? Is it the kind of thing that I want to make? If not... No, it's not going to happen. So you can write the greatest script in the world. You send it to somebody that doesn't want to make that kind of movie. It doesn't matter that it's the greatest script in the world. So you can't think of that rejection as rejection. You're just not aligned with that person. Go find a producer that you are aligned with. So that we're going to look at that. Is this something that I want to make? Is this something I can make? Do I have the resources to make it? Is this a little bit outside my budget level? Is this a bit below my budget level? Uh, is the... Do I think I can go out and get money for this? Do I think I can get a team together? Do I have the resource? Do I know a, a director that would like this project? Do I know actors that might be interested in this project? Do I think there's a celebrity that might, might, be, might be able to get into this project to help us with the marketing side of things? Is there, uh, th there is a laundry list of things that we're going to be thinking about, but it's all business considerations. It's all logistics considerations. You have a great, amazing scene that takes place with the, you know, this giant alien invasion and destruction of Sydney Opera House or something, right? Like, if you imagine that as a low-budget producer, I may look at that and go, can I pull that off realistically, that visual effect? If not, bang, you've already pushed yourself. Like, do I need to change the scene? If I change the scene, does that take away the value of the whole story? There's so many variables, right? So, so... Those things, you might think, ah, oh, well, I'm an artist. I don't want to think about the budget. I don't want to think about the production. Okay, that's fine. That's fair enough. You don't have to think about the budget and the production. But if you're writing screenplays, you're writing something for a producer to make. You're writing something that is for a specific purpose. And if you're not getting responses or nobody wants to know about it um that may be why it may also be that you don't know how to get in and all that you don't know how to find and connect with the right people and whatever and we'll talk about all that stuff as we go along too but the biggest thing the the most important part of all of it is that you need to understand that what you're writing if you're writing a screenplay what you're writing is something that someone else will go and turn into a movie now, yeah, you might, okay, fine, and we'll talk about that stuff too. But at the end of the day, a screenwriter who's simply focused on screenwriting wants to make write something that someone else will turn into a film. So you need to make sure that you're writing something that someone else can turn into a film. And that means partly who you're connecting with or who you're trying to connect with, and that means partly, even more largely, the story and what you've created and is it solid and is it pull people through it does it give them the cinema experience there's a hundred things that i'm trying to cram into this one video you could probably watch like all of them you could probably watch this video three times and, and not fully grasp it all so we're going to talk about the stuff over and over again as we go along but the the main takeaway that i want you to get from this based upon the questions and comments that we're getting along the way is what does a producer want a producer wants to be able to make a movie I have looked at nearly 30,000 project submissions over an 18 year span of time. Do you have any idea how depressing it is to look for materials, to have an open submissions policy and to find that fewer than one in a thousand projects is even something that I would say yes to. And all of the ones that I found were optioned by the time that I found them. 
In other words, the time it takes me to sift through the thousand to find the one in that time, that project is good enough that I got options somewhere else. That's what you're dealing with. 999 of them are not, not right for me. About 800 of the thousand are not viable to anyone. So the, the takeaway, sorry if this turned into a little bit of a rant, but I think it's important for writers to truly understand this perspective. I can't give you this perspective in one video. Even today, even if you go, oh, okay, I'm starting to see it. it, it you, you're not like spend some time with me. I'm going to continue to give you my perspective. So over time, you'll see it over time. You'll understand it over time. You'll understand the process and how to do uh, those steps and how to how to ex how to expand your ideas into stories and all that kind of stuff. But it's going to take time. It's not going to happen in a day because there's too much to convey. And a lot of it is ex experiential. It's based upon the things that you've learned along the way. There is no single path to screenwriting or storytelling success. There is no single path. Every person on the planet is unique. We all have a unique window through which we experience our world. That means we're all going to have a different path to our individual success. I've decided to vlog and share my path as I go along it. I haven't shared the first 20 years, but I built this whole thing. It's effing amazing. <laughs> I'm very proud of what I built along the way. Nobody knows about it. <laughs> so I've decided to, as I move into this next phase, share this part of it. Maybe you'll understand what I'm about. Maybe you'll want to be a part of it. Maybe you'll just use it and take it in your own way. And that's totally fine. That's totally okay with me too. But you have to understand that your path is going to be unique. I can help you. I can, sh I can, I can give you ideas. I can give you perspective that's, gonna, that's going to give you a better shot at it. But you're still the one that's going to have to take the path. And that's why every single day you're going to have to watch. The, you're going to have to take action. This is a reason this is the daily prompt. It's not a class. It's not a course. This is a prompt, a call to action every day for you to go work on your project. That's what this is about. So let's turn this into a daily prompt for you today with whatever it is that you're working on right now. Now, if you've been working on these days as we're, as we're rolling this out, you're probably going to approach it from a little bit of a different perspective than if you've, you know, we have 300 episodes already online and you're coming here uh, <laughs> later on, you're binge watching or something, uh, or you're somewhere else along the way in your project. What I want you to really think about today is I want you to consider who is your project most in sync with. You may not have the foggiest idea and that's okay. Spend a little bit of time exploring. Look out there in the world. See who, who might my project be most in sync with. You... At the end of the day, if you're new to the industry, if you don't know any, anybody in the industry, you don't know anything about storytelling or screenwriting, um, you know, you, you might have absolutely no idea whatsoever. And that's fine. Uh, you don't need to have an idea when you start. All you need to do when you start is you need to think, what do I think it is? What do I think is the, the, the target that I'm reaching for? What do I, who do I think my project is in sync with? Because once you take the idea out of your head and put it on the page and it meets with reality, who you think your target is, is going to help you identify who your target really is. Ideas spark ideas. Take it out of your head, make it real. It's going to meet with reality and it's going to spark new ideas that get you in the direction of where you're trying to go. Hopefully that makes sense. Enjoy today's action prompt. If I talk too fast, go back and watch this again. There's a ton in here. Uh, as there is in all these episodes, I know that I'm cramming too much into each of the in, into each of the episodes. I know that you could, at the end of the first week, you can go back and watch all the first week's episodes again. You're going to see them in a whole different way. Um, <laughs> there's going to come to a point where you just can't sit and spend your entire day, all day, every day watching these things. Uh, but... <laughs> 
but you could. <laughs> if, uh, if you have any questions about anything, pop it in the comments. If you disagree with anything or you want to make a, a nasty or negative comment, pop it in the comments. Let's have a discussion. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all ears. Um, whatever you think, uh, let me know, but by all means, do not let today go by without taking some physical action. 10 minutes, two hours, 10 hours, it's up to you, but take some today, now. See you tomorrow.